Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. And welcome back to another edition of Capital Connection. Fridays during the Noon Report, we give you, the listener, direct connection to what's happening in Albany and Harrisburg with the experts on the issues at the state capitals. They are Jason McGuire of New Yorkers for Constitutional Freedoms and Michael Gear at the Pennsylvania Family Institute. Gentlemen, it's been a couple weeks since the program's aired. It is great to be back in action, and there's lots to talk about on the COVID-19 front. Jason, you have written a recent article on how we can honor God and government during these trying times in real practical ways. Tell our listeners how we can do that. Yeah, I just I know there's a lot of concern out there right now regarding the, the role of government and, and whether or not the churches have the right to gather. And uh, there's just there's, there's this conflict that we send some tension. And so I just I put a little statement out there. I wanted us to be aware of the fact that there is a way for us, a path forward for us to honor both God and government in this. Government is not the enemy. Is it true that sometimes they they encroach upon liberties and freedoms, and maybe even in this instance or in this crisis? Sure. Uh, but at the same time, they're also a partner in trying to protect public safety. And so I think there are some things we can do. For example, our organization is not encouraging churches to meet in their sanctuaries. We think that is a wise step that government is taking to reduce the spread of this uh, coronavirus. But we think that the government goes too far when it says that it cannot allow uh, drive-in services, uh, that there's a reasonable accommodation to be made for a person's religious liberty, and there's a way forward where I think Christians can honor both God and government and not view government as the enemy in the midst of COVID-19. And we'll give the website, that very good article, we encourage folks to go to your website and read that. Michael, uh, we had Alliance Defending Freedom on this week. They're fielding over 100 calls a day from churches and others uh, from the faith community about how some of their religious freedoms might be undermined in the midst of this national emergency. This goes much further than requiring people to wear masks, for instance. How are you counseling? I know you do a lot of good work in this realm. How are you counseling the faith community in the midst of this pandemic? Well, very similarly to what uh, Jason uh, just said, our attorneys at the uh, Independence Law Center have been getting calls from churches as well. Jeremy and Randy, our attorneys there, have been uh, counseling with pastors about, uh, again, government is not our enemy in this situation. There are religious liberty concerns, and we're going to be host, hosting a webinar next Tuesday for pastors and churches on this topic and hosting uh, Kelly Shackelford from the First Liberty Institute about the religious liberty implications related to the COVID crisis. That's the uh, law firm that represented that Kentucky church that had their drive-in service shut down, and yeah. that was way too far of what government did there. Yeah. Uh, you, speaking of that, uh, Jason, you have asked the state for clarification on drive-in religious services, whether they be at movie theaters or whatnot. Um, We mentioned the case out in Louisville, which has become a national story. Have you heard yet from Albany? And if so, what did they tell you? Well, we've heard nothing official out of Albany as of yet. We've had some back-channel communications with uh, members of the governor's office. But but what's really happening now is at a local level, Shimon County, for example, the county executive is saying that churches there cannot have drive-in services. The Shimon County order is going beyond what the governor's intention is, and so we're trying to sort that out. And thankfully, I think our friends Alliance Defending Freedom are going to be weighing in very shortly, and I think we'll see some positive developments in that front. Michael, turning the page a little bit, you've petitioned the governor to stop with elective surgeries like abortions during the crisis. Seems odd that that is happening. I know a number of states have done away with this, but Pennsylvania is one of those ones that have yet to take action here. How much of a difference do you think think that this petition drive will ultimately make? Well, we've had uh, many thousands of signatures uh, from folks across Pennsylvania calling on our governor to shut down elective abortions in Pennsylvania. All other elective surgeries have been shut down under the governor's order, which says that non-life-sustaining organizations and businesses cannot operate. And yet, Planned Parenthood, which is clearly a non-life-sustaining 
entity when they do abortions is allowed to remain. Uh, it's important to raise our voices to the governor. He is a strong ally of Planned Parenthood. That's been true for uh, years. But uh, uh, the governor needs to hear the voice of the people about this. And the people need to be educated about where their governor stands on this life and death issue. Governor Cuomo making news this week when he declared past uh, the pandemic or the peak of the pandemic, God didn't do this, saying I did this or we did this, the state of New York. That's not playing well in religious circles, is it? No, you know, it was chilling when I heard the governor make the statement, the number is down because we brought the number down. God did not do that. And, you know, we have to remember that, you know, we read through biblical history, we see that when leaders like Nebuchadnezzar and others spoke, they really spoke on behalf of a nation, if you will. And, and I think that we sometimes forget that today, that we have elected leaders, representatives, and when they make declarative statements like that, uh, really speaking to the arrogance of man, uh, rather than, than our need and our dependence upon God, they're really speaking for us as well. And what I mean by that is that there are blessings of obedience and curses of disobedience. And when our leaders spurn God rather than follow after faith, then there is a price for the people to pay. Yeah. And I want to see our elected officials that are declaring their need for God and, and dropping to our needs. And if our governor won't do it, then the people of this state need to do it. Yeah, it surprised me. I wonder if he misspoke or did he offer any clarification after the fact, as every one of those press conferences, he really talks up his faith. Has he said anything as kind of an apology for that or a clarification for those remarks? Not at all. Not at all. And, and I think that's the problem you see with, with the faith of Andrew Cuomo is he likes to, on one hand, portray himself as a Catholic individual. But on the other hand, he is abortion expansion Andrew Cuomo. Uh, it is during Holy Week when he introduces gay marriage or the original abortion expansion legislation uh, in those respective years, and yet at the same time, we'll often speak of his Catholic faith. And so you see kind of the split sides of Andrew Cuomo that comes out at moments like this. Very interesting. Michael, election officials to say are overwhelmed might be the understatement of the year. You've got, on the one hand, historic election reforms, and then on the other hand, you've got uh, just this onslaught of absentee and mail-in ballots uh, cast in the Commonwealth this year. They've moved the primary, but even now, many are saying we're we're not ready for a June primary. What say you? Yeah, the big changes uh, that came with the, with the new law was going to be a challenge for election officials to begin with. And then you add COVID-19 on top of it with uh, absenteeism from many of the employees, the uh, social distancing and other things that are added on to it. It does put into question uh, the ability to pull off a mail-in ballot program in the June 2nd uh, elections. So yeah. It's going to be a problem, there's no question. Well, let's spend the last minute or so that we have guys talking about reopening New York and Pennsylvania. Both states are part of this seven-state uh, kind of regional approach to returning to normalcy. Jason, we'll begin with you. Um, I- doing this in concert with other states, or is New York going to act independently of those other states? How is this going to work exactly as you see it in New York State? Well, you're going to have this fairly wieldy committee of the the chiefs of staff for the governor, as well as um, economic appointee and a health appointee to this committee that will supposedly collaboratively decide how we will reopen the region. Not exactly sure how that's going to work, because even within our state, we see various rural areas and urban areas, uh, let alone among the various states, there's going to be some issues. But at some point, we do have to be reopening this economy. We cannot continue like this. And, you know, every time we shut down a system or it, 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 you hear the grinding of the gears, uh, they're meant to keep going. Yeah. And we've got to start reopening things. I think that's what we're looking for. Yeah, State House and uh, State Senate in Harrisburg approving this measure that would gradually return to normalcy. Uh, many small business owners say if they don't open soon, they are never going to reopen. But the governor is going to veto that effort despite being passed in both houses of the General Assembly. Michael, your reaction to this? It's really tragic that the governor is going to do this because uh, there are so many costs, personal costs, mental health costs, costs in suicide and, and addiction uh, that come with the decline in the economy and poverty. And that needs to be weighed. And with the governor's uh, veto of Senate Bill 613, he's basically saying to the people of Pennsylvania, 
I don't ultimately care about those things. And that's tragic when 45 states are following the principles that are in Senate Bill 613, following federal guidelines, our governor thinks differently, and that's sad. All right, and that will have to be the last word this week. But, hey, read that article about how to honor God and government in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, Jason, where can folks do that? AlbanyUpdate.com. And learn more about this wolf veto on opening up Pennsylvania. Huge story this week. Where can they find that, Michael? PAFamily.org. Thank you.